Ma Pimpo Aiti, the Haitian Das, we're living in Haiti podcast. A new week brings a new show, a new opportunity to talk about folks who, who, who are somewhere else and are now in Haiti impacting, changing, providing employment, really providing a new direction for the country. And I have a, we have a heck of a guest today. And, and, and the, my right hand man and left hand man, my soldier in arms, Mark Antoine is going to be helping me discuss and chat with this incredible fellow, yeah. Mark, the pastor. How you doing, man? I'm doing well. What's going on, Chris? Really <laughs> excited for this week. I'm doing good, man. Doing good. Just trying to, uh, just prepared for this one here. Cause I was, I've, I had this on my calendar for a while. Cause, uh, our guest is someone who's been uh, someone who really exemplifies, mm -hmm. exemplifies, you know, what could happen when you have someone who really brings as a qualification mm -hmm. the every manness, right? You know, uh, we had some incredible folks who've come back, come through here, you know, with some on paper incredible qualifications. But, but as so many people know, it's not about what you have on a wall. It's about what you're doing and what you've shown and what you've gotten done. Right? That's mm -hmm. that's most important. That's the most important thing. You know, everything else is just 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 filler. And, mm. Ty and Tyreek Muhammad, our mm. guest, yeah, is someone who I, I have so much respect for because, as you as you saw with the name, you know, he's not someone who has that French last name, right? No. He's <laughs> he's an, an African American, uh, and he's been at it. You know, doing a lot of stuff stateside. First off, he's a successful man stateside. Has done some great things, and now he's like, you know, what? I, I, you know, it's it's be, it's greater than just, you know, doing what he's doing, impacting stateside. It's now how do we get a movement worldwide, right? Yeah. And, and lucky for us, you know, Tyreek has decided Haiti is going to be that first waypoint to a much larger mission, mm -hmm. right? And and he's going to be talking to us today about his background. Uh, the fact that he's he has a growing staff of of rep, call agent rep, and, and, and back office representatives in Haiti, right? And and ultimately where where this is gonna go, where this is gonna you know uh, and 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 bring and bring you in on how to get that done yourself, mm -hmm. right? Because that's the big thing is is how do we m multiply those these sort of efforts to yeah. to impact and change the world. And so I, I'm not gonna hold off too much longer. Hey, Tyreek, how you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good, man. I'm honored by the introduction. <laughs> I'm definitely honored by that. Appreciate that. I'm doing man. great, man. It feel, it feel good to be in Haiti right now. Definitely. And and, and that's important to say. Right now, he is in Pitchonville, <laughs> even with the lockdown, mm -hmm. and he knew it. It's not even a surprise, Tyreek. Tyreek knew because he came in with another a show sort of ours and 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 told the social, listen, you know, probably. With COVID happening, the, the airports are probably going to be shut down, right? Yeah. So, so he came with his suitcase ready for an extended stay. It happened, and in fact, I I remember ca calling you up, Tyreek, and and asking you, "Hey man, how you feeling? You good? You're, Listen, man, I've I've been prepared for this. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> yes, sir. <good>. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I'm home. I'm what? You, what do you mean? I don't even. I don't close or not. I'm here. Yeah. And and he's been just you know at it, and so he's someone who I I have you know he reached out. We first connected through uh, one of my C Genty. I think it was a Haiti Biz News show. I was when I was doing it back daily. Reached out and, and he was and he was someone who was going to you know. I, and I get so many folks who message me. Hey, C Genty, you know, I, I see what you're doing. I can I, I have this idea. I want to come to Haiti and execute it. I, I get one at least once, if not once a day, but once every other day. Mm -hmm. And most folks are just at that idea stage, and that and that is unfortunate because if if if. 10% of these folks who, who reach out to me with these ideas actually were serious about moving forward with their the, with those ideas. I tell you, we'd be, you know, we'd be, mm -hmm. you know, jobs wouldn't be an issue, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, Correct. and farther along in job development and moving the country forward. Luckily, Tyrick was one of those people. Not only did he reach out to me, like a week later, we had a meeting about, you know, how, you know, how we can, you know, integrate some of the things I already doing with some things he already wanted to do because he was already in that space. And the following week, I swear to you, I, I was like, I felt like it was like the following week, he, he reached out to me. Hey, I'm in Haiti. <laughs> I'm in Haiti. Uh -huh. I'm scouting out <laughs> office, office locations. You know, I, I got my wife and business partner out here. You uh -huh. know, we're, 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 we're interviewing people. 
already making moves. And I'm like, dang, this guy ain't no joke. And, our, and, and of course, I had to meet him. And, and from there, man, he's he's put words to action. And one of those few rare people, a, a man of my own heart, you know, who, who says and then immediately executes, not mm-hmm. just, you know, you know, a year later, you hear he's kind of, you know, in the rim, uh, sort of about to take a, a, a foot. No, he immediately executes. And so mm-hmm. I'm, I'm so happy to have Tyrick here and, and we're going to really deep dive uh, on a lot of different things. And again, given that he's he's been at it for maybe a year now, a lot of these experiences are fresh. He, it's they're in progress, and so you're going to really get somebody uh, who who can who can provide a a current perspective on things, and then and then we'll get Tyreek back you know, over time, and and um, Tyreek I'm sure will give us updates how things are going. So again, it's it's going to be a fun series, but certainly a fun episode. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yeah. mm-hmm. I'm so, honored to be here, man. Honored to be here. So Tyreek. Walk folks through who who is Tyreek Muhammad. First off, you know you got to give us the little early history. The, that last name, you got to let folks. What's the where is that coming from, right? Because you're African American, right? So I think once folks know that, folks are usually attuned to uh, Nation of Islam. So definitely walk folks Correct. through that, and then and then just you know the the gestation of, of how Tyreek Muhammad became Tyreek Muhammad. <laughs> Nah, that's no problem at all, man. I definitely take y'all to the beginning. First and foremost, I'm a father of four, two boys and two girls. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a go-getter, man. I'm a hustler, businessman. And I'm just here to bring the brain impact, the bring value to the world, to serve the world, serve my people. Not that I'm anti nobody else, but I love my people due to the situation that we in all across the world. So I'm here to bring value. I'm here to create opportunity. And hey, I live my life every day like tomorrow, not promise, because it's not promise. As Chris CGNT mentioned earlier, when we speak about something, it's important to execute. So that's who I am. I would label myself as a revolutionary, somebody here to serve the world. And my name, you know, my father named me Muhammad Tariq from the Conqueror of Spain in 711, Tariq Jabril, if you're familiar with that, the Moors, 711 conquered Spain. That's where my first name comes from. My last name is Muhammad, being that my father is in a high rank of the nation of Islam. So I grew up around the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, you know, um, Elijah, hearing, hearing Elijah Muhammad, watching the Million Man March from a youth. Just, just being in that environment, understanding the importance of knowing thyself, understanding that I'm not an African-American, I'm an African born in America. Understand that, understand that we the original man, where we the de- where we derived from that we created the medicine with MOTEP. And just just knowing who I am. So that that's that's my upbringing, just having that love for my people, man. Just to keep it short and simple, all in a nutshell. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Love it, love it, love it. And and so where stateside did you grow up? Miami, Florida. Miami, Florida. I'm a South yeah, Florida. Little, little Haiti. A little, little Haiti. <laughs> little Haiti. Okay, I didn't even. I didn't, I, I didn't know. I, little Haiti. I, so that means you, you grew up with a lot of a lot of Haitians. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Okay. 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 That's good. That's good. And uh, and then and you know obviously you went through, finished your schooling, right? So talk a little bit about that. Like how did, you know, what were the first ceilings to to in in terms of your success, and the successes that you had, stateside, and then how did that? Because I know you got married to a Haitian woman, so that's a part of right. that that part process so tell us about that was she someone who you you knew grew up with how did that Mm -hmm. yeah man it was funny how we met we actually met online through social media we met Mm -hmm. we linked up you know good vibes spent a lot of time just to fast forward everything we end up getting married you know and um she she brought me to haiti and when she brought me to haiti i fell in love got introduced to her family i saw the opportunity Mm-hmm. Now, before I came to Haiti, all I ever heard was all the bad things. You know, people gonna rob you getting off the airport and be mm-hmm. careful. This, that. <laughs> but when, when I came to Haiti, I fell in love with it, man. Just waking up, seeing my people every day, the people beautiful, amazing. I'm walking in the streets like I have no worries in the world. <laughs> I feel like energy is contagious. That's mm-hmm. that's not on my mind when I'm walking the streets. I'm not thinking somebody gonna rob me or do that can happen anywhere in the world. Yeah, but Haiti, yeah. it's a beautiful place, man. It's it's like that diamond that just need to be polished. And that's what I saw, you know, I'm in real estate. So when I walk in houses and I give y'all this analogy, when I walk in houses, 
even if it's a messed up property, what they'll call a bando, a vacant property that's heavily mm -hmm. distressed, I can see the end outcome of it. So when I walk in, I can see, hey, this is a beautiful property. Mm. People are like, what, what you talking about? To me, that's Haiti. Everyone mm. else seeing it through a different land, through a different lens. You know, your reality is based on perspective. So my perspective of Haiti is, hey, it's a lot of opportunity here, man. It's people who are looking for opportunity. It's great people willing to work, willing to do what they got to do. They just need that opportunity. So it just was a light bulb popped in my mind. And I'm like, hey, we have to build these bridges, man, to create opportunity for our people worldwide. And that's why I'm here starting in Haiti. I love it. I love it. And, and what year was that when you, when you went to Haiti the first time? That was roughly around 2018, about okay. two years ago. Okay, yeah, two years ago. Okay, okay. Correct. Very recent. Correct. Uh, now, uh, so stateside, what you said yesterday, you were doing real estate. So walk us through that. You know, what were you doing? Um, you know, telling you your different business ventures and real estate. How'd you get into that? And sort of walk us through that part. Okay, how I got introduced to real estate? I was actually working a nine to five job, and I was I was very frustrated very aggravated waking up every day going to work i did not i did not enjoy waking up in the morning going to work so i was just looking for an exit strategy looking for an extra route to get out of that job at that period of time it was roughly around december 2017 if i'm not mistaken i just bought my first property became a first time homeowner mm -hmm. i wanted to get in real estate but i felt like you needed a lot of money you know, I was always told, hey, you need a lot of money to invest. You need a lot of money. But I actually got introduced to real estate wholesaling by one of my close friends. And she she called me. She like, hey, hey, Tariq, you know, you know, you know, you can buy properties with no money down. I'm like, what? It just sound like a like a scam or something. What you mean? How you can buy a property with no, with no mm -hmm. money down? So she she introduced me to the real estate wholesaling. That was 2017 going into 2018. So, mm. you know, I'm an open-minded person. I'm, I think outside the box. So I took the initiative to just look look more into it, read books. And I see, hey, it's dudes who really capitalize and who create a maximum opportunity, changing their lives, man. Mm. So start going to seminars, start going to real estate conferences. And from December and June, June 7th, that's my, and that's my personal Independence Day, June 7, 2018. Mm. I, I got out the job and I just dove in full fledged in the real estate business. And here I am now. Nationwide Equity Pros is the company. We based right there in Miami. Our office is located right there in Brickell. CGNT had a chance to come through as well. Mm -hmm. that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's how I got introduced to real estate. And and you've made incredible progress in, in that amount of time. You've sold a good amount of homes, right? Uh, made a Correct. good amount of Correct. deals, right? And uh, I've seen you know, I, when I walked around your offices there, you know, your board's full of deals. <laughs> you definitely, know, definitely, man. Crossed out and finished and, and a lot in the pipeline. So uh, that's 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 great. Um, I know that you also have a team. You build a team uh, around you as well. And and that's sort of the ceilings of how you got into to Haiti, because, you know, a big part of, of, of your strategy is that you contact folks who who have who seem to be ideal people who might want to sell their property, even if they don't know that they want to sell it yet. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. and so to, to, to do that, uh, I know you use people to make calls from you. I know in, 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 in that industry that you're in, it's pretty common to use uh, folks in other countries. Right. And so, and so that's where I think this idea came to say, okay, well, instead of bringing those, that money, out to somewhere else why don't we use you know the the talent that's locally and and you chose because of your 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 wife said okay what can we do in haiti right is that is that how the story kind of went there correct correct just to touch just to elaborate on what mm -hmm, you're mm -hmm. saying you know my brother-in-law actually lives in haiti right mm -hmm. and my mindset man is always i don't i don't want to give a man a fish I'm here to teach a man how to fish so he can eat forever. That's my mindset. So being that I am in the real estate business, as, as CGNT mentioned earlier, a lot of investors, they outsource their what you would call cold callers. And they outsource it to Philippines, Mexico, 
just various places of the world. But I noticed that wasn't taking place in Haiti. So I'm like, okay, my brother-in-law is here. He's he looking for an opportunity. It's several people who, who English who's looking for opportunity. Why not bring it to Haiti? I can go back and forth. It's a short flight. And I'm the type of person I like to leave from the front, not the back. So it made perfect sense. I could, I could be here, boots on the ground, training these guys, showing them that, hey, it is possible. You can get these bonus checks. It just changed the paradigm of what's going on. So that's that's pretty much how that took place. And like I stated early in the conversation, I'm here to create change and bring value to my people all across the world. So why not Haiti? I love it. I love it. And and so that was the 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 the, the sort of catalyst that then got you over to put the seed and then and then execute towards um you know execute towards uh moving to Haiti, right? So Correct. It just seems to be, you know, such it's, it's actually start moving that direction. It's, it's almost it's intimidating. There was there wasn't any intimidation, man, when because, you know, you know, I've I've had the opportunity to go from Florida to Chicago, Chicago to France. And each time there's an intimidation factor of not knowing the area and the territory or the people. So how did you sort of get through that did you really rely on your on your connections that you had through your, through your wife's family or, or did you go about it a different way well definitely relying on the contacts from her side of the family and also meeting up with you learning from your mistakes you know i was always taught man don't don't why should i have to walk through the fire if someone else walked through it why not learn from that person's mistakes now, if I have to walk through it to pull someone else up, I would. But, hey, if you already went through the trials and tribulations, you telling me what to do and what not to do, then I'm going to take that advice. Excellent. So just listening to you telling me the things you went through and the errors you made, implementing those things and also connecting with her side of the family and also building my own network as well, man, just being with the pep block, the people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's that's one thing that uh, you know we, we did work close together uh, in terms of me. You know, because that's one thing folks don't really appreciate is that when, when folks reach out to me, I don't. Number one, I don't I don't ask for money because one of the things I, when I was moving to Haiti, um, there was a, a very popular female right. YouTuber who who uh, um, was doing basically what I do, but a lot simpler, just a vlog style where she would talk to a camera about different topics. And and I, I followed her because I always had in the back of my mind I, I want I would like to engage in Haiti and and so when I finally decided to pull the trigger, uh, I reached out to her and she was like, yeah, three hundred dollars for thirty minutes or fifteen minutes, some some ridiculous thing like that. What just to yeah. talk to her? Just to talk to her, and I was like, wow. And of course, obviously from there I unsubscribed and everything. Uh, <laughs> and I said, I said, you know what? This is not who I'm ever gonna be. I'm someone who's gonna. Not only talk about business opportunities, but encourage others, because how can you be in a country and you see that everything stems from the lack of investment in jobs, um, but then you just want to make money off the very first head mm -hmm. that comes your, I don't know, as uh, you know, I can understand maybe she wants to, you know, it's tough in Haiti to, you know, income wise. So she's trying to figure out new revenue streams. Uh, maybe that's way, that's one way to look at it, but I'm not, I'm not here to talk uh, negatively on, on that. I'm just, I just said, I was going to do that. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to glad that Ty Tyrick is someone who uh, I was connected with and, and is doing great, great stuff and great things in the country uh, because of it. And, right. and so and so, Tyrick, when you transitioned to 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 Haiti uh, and, and you're actually in the field, you know, what was the first things that sort of. um you know, because 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 the first thing you you went there to start 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 a business. So there's certain things Correct. you had to do to get that going. So so break that down to 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 some folks here. Like, you know, what sort of business structure are you working on or and got? Um, and and how do what are the some of the ways as someone who's African American can interact in Haiti? That's one of the first questions. Even the Haitian diaspora have. How can I get started? You know, how can I from a just a general paperwork perspective, you know, you know, are you working with attorneys? Like how, how did you go about really getting to the point where you, you, you structure your business to where it can, it can run Are you, are you, is, are there under the name of your, your, your wife and brother-in-law? I mean, how, how, how are you executing despite being African-American in Haiti where, 
you know, foreigners aren't really necessarily mm-hmm. um, it's not a, it's a clear pathway, I guess. Mm. Well, number one, you have to have a translator because I, I don't speak Creole. I'm learning at the moment. So I definitely needed to translate someone who trustworthy, which my brother-in-law was that. So I was definitely grateful to have that as boots on the ground, someone trustworthy and things of that nature. And at, originally, my plan was to start at SA. However, my operation at the moment is not at that point. So it really didn't make sense after speaking with different attorneys, speaking with different guys who have businesses, um, CGNT being one of them. And just realize I'm not at that point right now for SA, even though it does offer more protection when you get more assets and things of that nature in the country. So now the SI was the best route for me to go. And yes, I did get an uh, attorney and he pretty much walked me through the appropriate steps going through the DGE. So, the, the so, so, so let me clear it up for people who may be listening. So an SI is a society individual. It's basically the equivalent to a sole proprietorship. But but what's what's so great about an SI is that um, is that it, it takes two three weeks right where SA can take right. months right SI the 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 fees and costs are are much lower where where SA would would run as high as three four actually four thousand dollars is is an attorney that I know that I trust Correct. charges and actually gets results. Uh, where an SI can be, I mean, honestly, it's it's pretty low. Uh, if you go the route of attorney, obviously, the attorney will will charge a fee commensurate of an attorney. Um, but if you were to try to do it yourself, which I I, I pretty much did eighty percent of it myself, right? You know, it involves going to the Minister of Commerce, and then um, and and then and then going through the tax office, and so it's a, it's a pit. It's it's not that complicated. Um, and I've talked about it on on my Anu Palais early series on C Gentsy of how to do that, and I've put uh, things out on my on on a Google Drive of that video as well for people to download of how, how to get that done. It's not that complicated, but given the unique situation where Tyrick was African American and 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 had already started his business and wanted to get that you know done quickly in an expedi- expedited fashion, it made sense to 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 use an attorney and and just have a stress free experience because I can tell you. I was it wasn't a stress free experience for me. I, it was a lot of back and forth, <laughs> of messaging folks who you know what's how what's the status update. So it's always it's always advisable to use an attorney throughout your entire process. So, okay, so that's what SI. Is. I just wanted to jump in and make sure folks understood what SI was. It's effectively a sole proprietorship uh, rather than a corporate structure, but you have a business name, entity behind what you're doing. Okay, yeah, sorry. So go ahead. So you're talking about you're saying your attorney is uh, working for you uh, and moving you forward is what you're saying, Tyrek. So that's pretty much the route I went through, um, obtaining an attorney to go ahead and dot all my I's and cross all my T's, man, and made the process much more simple, especially being that it's it's a translation problem with me. I have to use the translation app sometimes when my brother not around. So it, it, it was tough. So getting an attorney for me was the, was the best route to go and also speaking with CGNT and other people, things of that nature. But to answer your question from earlier, I know you mentioned being an African born in America, doing business in Haiti. But I, I want to just talk about that a little bit more, man. You know, I, w- I was always taught from a young age that the world is our playground. And that's what I was always taught. So I never was afraid to step outside of the box. I always had a, a international point of view, an international mindset for things. My dad lived, actually lived in Africa for six years in Uganda, East Africa, in six years, for six years, got married, I actually have two sisters who actually um, from Africa, Uganda. So I always just thought a little bit different from my upbringing, man. So it never was no problem with, with me making this transition, being in Haiti. And I plan on living here. So no problem with me. Okay. Okay. So so it sounds like the the, the transition, you know, you would very much recommend uh, using the services of an attorney to make sure the process you're doing are the right processes because... Yes, you do an SI, but but even the SI, there's a component of uh, having some sort of formal registration with the you know, with with Haiti, right? And typically for a foreigner, it's a permis séjour. You have to basically get it's equivalent to like a resident, you know, resident alien, right? And so uh, that's the, f- the the most formal way of going about it. 
though there's other ways to structure your entity because the entity in and of itself is is independent, right? Even though it is a sole proprietorship, it's independent. So, um, right. you know, so I, so that is that what you would recommend, Tyreek, to kind of uh, for someone on the outside coming in procedure wise? I would definitely, I would definitely recommend that. You know, it's very it's very cost efficient, and if your operation is not already large, you have you know seventy to one hundred members. It's really no need to start with an SA if you don't have a maximum amount of assets already here in Haiti. It makes more sense to start the SA now. Once you the SI, I apologize, the SI. Once you obtain assets, once your business begins to grow to the next level, and you do have 80, 90, 100 employees, and you have your board set up, then the SA would be the route to go. Okay. And then it also protects your assets with the SA as well. So how has your experience been with uh, paying your employees, you know, setting up a bank account and all these fundamental things that are important to running a business? You know, how has that experience been, you know, the administrative side? Like, has it was it a headache? Like how how did you go about that part of it? Well, at first, at first, I started off with sending payments through Calm and Chris like, hey, man, what you doing? You paying too much money. You paying all these fees. <laughs> So I'm like, okay. <laughs> then he sent me the other route. You sent me the other route um, with Zoom. Zoom with Zoom was pretty good. By the way, it's that's X, is still X, that's X O O M for my folks who X. Yeah, mm -hmm. X O O M. Right. But I think you pronounce it Zoom still, but it's X O O M. Yeah, go ahead. Correct. So Zoom, Zoom was a little, little better than Calm. It was more cost efficient than Calm and Western Union. Cause them fees they definitely do add up so you you want to try to keep expenses as low as possible when you're growing your business so zoom made sense the bank account makes the most sense opening up the bank account with um capital bank having every employee to have their account underneath the business so things are moving smoothly and one thing that i did notice was a problem in haiti a lot of the agents complained about was they they never got paid on time so with this business, we bring Buzz International Network Communication Center. We want to make sure we do right by our people, do right by our agents, our partners, make sure they paid on time so they could take care of their families and continue to grow in the business. So things things been smooth, man. It's been yeah, very smooth. Can't complain. Very common problem you know, in terms of uh, for Haitians in Haiti, you know, getting paid is, is, is things being late. But I can tell you, I've never been late on my side ever you know i i, I don't uh, i don't that that doesn't make sense to me you know i you have to pay your people <laughs> you know what i mean that's usually my first waypoint of every every fiscal month is um you know did i hit payroll and that's when i kind of breathe a sigh of relief ah okay hit payroll now i can you know start looking at these other expenses that have to be taken care of mm -hmm. but payroll i don't i don't you know you can't mess with that that's you're playing with human beings you know when you're playing with human beings you have to take that very serious yeah i know we yeah, go ahead, yeah I, was, I, was, I was gonna say something. I, Ty Tyreek is um, really bringing a really um, special perspective, unique perspective. Um, and I know for Haitian Americans coming back to Haiti who are kind of used to, um, you know, Haitian culture <clears throat> with our parents. But Tyreek, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, was there anything specific in the work environment or in your business environment, in the professional environment in Haiti, um, culturally that kind of threw you off or was a challenge to you um within the haitian professional culture or the haitian work culture no it's, it never was not not really i won't say that because even before after the first time i came to haiti i did a lot of studying just to try to get more familiar with the culture also i grew up in little haiti i went to elementary school with a lot of Haitian Horace Mann, if anyone know Horace Mann in the United States, that's a predominantly Haitian school. I went to Edison for a few weeks, graduated from Northwestern. So I was always in that environment, familiar mm -hmm. with the Haitian culture. Mm -hmm. My wife, she's a Haitian, so I've always been around it. Studying the Haitian Revolutionary War, studying the culture online, reading books, getting familiar. So when I made that transition, man, it, it wasn't many problems with me because mm -hmm. I was open-minded. Even, even accepting the Haitian holidays, mm -hmm. you know, letting them take off, letting them enjoy time with their family, not being like, hey, no, because 
the people in the United States know this is a client mm -hmm. in the United States. It's like, no, I respect the culture. Mm -hmm. I respect that. So it wasn't tough for me at all, man. I actually love the culture. I love it. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. I, I think and, that, that's and really one thing I want to, I want to end off, ahead. not to cut you off. One thing I want to, mm -hmm. go ahead. No, yeah, right, go, so go ahead. One thing I want to end it off with, man, like being, being an African in America, the culture is we we really don't have a culture as black people when you really think about it like the foods the way we dress the mute it's, it's really not a culture so when you when you start making that you know being around the haitian culture and seeing you know the soup you move the legging the, the way you dress the the music mm -hmm. it, it just that's the culture so it just i'm very open to it i actually appreciate it man i actually appreciate it just to end it off so, so love that question because it leads me to the next part, which is people management, right? Because you mentioned that uh, you have employees already, and, and 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 there's you know, for example, my big, I have to be honest with you, I Haiti has too many dang on holidays, man. Is there because you know, America we have once every other one, one every three months or so, but like this, America has about seven total holidays or so, right? Haiti has 22. It's like, yo, <laughs> every other week, my guys are having to take off or, or, or because of the way my business is structured, uh, we, we have, we don't have particular SLAs that are tied to American, the American calendar. And so on certain holidays, they have to come in. And so I have to pay, I have to pay holiday pay, which is, you know, time and a half, you know, uh, legally, you know, you had to, and even if it wasn't, I'd still do it. Right. Uh, and right. so, you know, so there's, so that's, uh, an annoyance for me it's annoying but uh but there's other aspects Tarek I'm sure that from a cultural perspective you know um you know the way and because you know you did a nine to five so you you know you know how certain things are supposed to be as a nine to five employee that mm -hmm. perhaps doesn't you don't really see in Haiti man so talk about that talk about the little cultural differences you're seeing from a work ethic perspective uh, for the Haitians you've worked with that you know have been maybe problematic and, and how have you had to uh help them be better well help them be better man still sharp and still that's one of the things the models in our company every every day we have training sessions every day we go over calls every day we watch personal development to just become a better person man because that's what it's all about when you leave that workplace it's bigger than just the word. You still have your family. You still have your whole life. So I feel like working on a mindset, working on a spiritual, working on a mental every day would develop them to be better agents, to produce better in a company. So that's just that's just what I feel moving forward, because that's what I started with to even before I even got into entrepreneurship. Any problems? I never really had major problems. Maybe if someone fired herself by not showing up or something like that, it may be a little problematic. I don't like to fire people, so other people do it. That's not one of my things. But besides that, man, it, I really haven't had too many problems. Everyone come in. Everyone come in on time. And everyone is motivated to put in that work. Now, we don't structure it in a nine-to-five situation. We have two shifts split. One shift from eight to twelve, and one shift from one to five, because what I discovered that eight to four shift for for what we doing, it just it just was too much, it was just too overbearing. It I, I really felt like it was more productivity doing the eight to twelve and then the one to five shift, and the results been immaculate since we implemented that structure. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Can I work for you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's <laughs> I like that shift. I tell you what. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Um, so, but that's good though. So you mentioned that, um, it's really, you really focus on human development, you know, Correct. truest sense of, if it's not even about, okay, here's how I want things to, for your job. And, but, but it's more than that. You really bring, uh, a much more holistic, how can you be better for your life, uh, perspective. And that, and that drives a lot of, and I read, and that provides a remedy to a lot of the issues that could arise they don't even arise because you're you, you you cut them off by having those conversations about discipline about how to you know prioritize and 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 really uh make sure you, you get you eat that frog sort of you know those sort of conversations already are being done 
by you uh, to your to your guys. Yeah. Yeah. I always want to know, man. One of the questions that we asked in our interview. Hey, what is your why? Mm -hmm. What is your why? Because don't work for money, man. If you're working for money, you're working for all the wrong reasons. I don't work for money at all. It's, it's about freedom. The money awesome. is a tool to get to the freedom. So the first the first question we want to know, what is your why? What's, what's going to drive you to wake up, to come every day and do what you got to do to take care of your family? That's what's and important. What's, what's great about Tyrek and your business model is that it's not just words. Like literally, you know, you've promoted two of your guys and now they're managers, right? Mm -hmm. And and they and also what's great about Tarek's model, Tarek hasn't really talked about it much. I, I'll, I'll talk to, about it for him. So so because he's in real estate, you know, and he has this outbound call center calling um, to as, as sort of appointment setting is kind of the, the way to think about it. Um, and so ultimately, the people, when they secure a deal, they get a percentage uh, of that deal. So imagine you know, a home sales for $400,000, right? And, you know, whatever that percentage is of $400,000, that's going to be a lot of money, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, not, it's not 1%, but let's just say it's 1%. 1% 1 of $400,000 is uh, a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. exactly. And so and so the money that, that these guys are getting uh, when they, when they, when the deal that they bring to the table secures, uh, I remember, I remember seeing one of the guys get paid, and I, I'm gonna put your business out there, Tyrick. I'm gonna put it out because folks need to know about this. Uh, they got he got paid what two to two thousand or three thousand is dollars cash right in his hand. Mm, mm. And 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 when you have you know a, a, a Haitian who has opportunities to where he can clearly see, right, that he's working. Uh, and if he works hard, that that immediately means cash money in the thousands in his hand, right? And then on top of that, he grows, he can grow, and 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 now have a team of other people and securing their their um, opportunity. So when Tyrick is talking about what is your why, you know, he's not just talking, giving lip service about you know just money and stuff. He's really saying, I'm here to provide opportunity that that hasn't been seen in Haiti, the style and the type we haven't seen in Haiti. And, and we're looking for people who, who, who align with understanding we're not here just for a job. We're here to change and impact. Am, am I capturing everything? Tarek? That's a fact, man. And it's, it's crazy. You said that cause he actually right here now, man, the one who actually closed on that big bonus. He, he he's here on a Saturday. He actually got promoted mm -hmm. to the acquisition side of things. Mm. He got promoted to the acquisitions. It's another, supervisor who got promoted to the acquisitions and one of the agents got promoted to management so the growth the growth is unlimited man we try to um create great incentives to keep our guys motivated with the, the way we set up our bonus structure we we throw gatherings family events man we, we want to treat it as a family so we want to create that healthy work environment that growth environment and that's that's what we bring in here to haiti mm -hmm. love it now uh, the qualifications of these guys, I'm, I'm sure if they're calling, if they're calling America, their English got to be spot on. Right. So uh, what do you generally look for? I, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I look, I look for the confidence. I look for the mm -hmm. tonality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my question uh, for you, uh, Tariq was, I'm sure a lot of, a lot of the people listening, um, would probably like to get connected to, to your business. Um, so I just wanted to clarify, um, the business that you've set up the call center, when people call in, are they calling in to look at houses in Haiti or is it houses in the U.S.? Okay, it's houses in the United States. And predominantly, we do outbound calls. There is some inbound calls that come in because the automated dollar system that we use, which is the all-in dollar, mm -hmm. it usually calls roughly around five to six people at a time per agent. Mm -hmm. So as we're doing the outbound calls there are going to be inbound calls that come in and we're calling homeowners from lists that i pulled and my partner pulled through different marketing strategies we use mm -hmm. to just see how motivated the homeowner is to sell a property so the agents in haiti are calling homeowners in the united states as investors so as mm -hmm. we're training them we're training them to be real estate investors mm -hmm. so cgnt to answer your earlier you asked us the the um the accent does it play a role 
Not really, man, because if you have that that confidence and you have that tonality and that smile on your face while you're on the phone, it don't matter the accent. As long as the clarity is there and they can understand you mm -hmm. and they can trust and you eliminate and doubt in that home on the mind that you know what you're talking about, which is our responsibility to do to make sure they're trained. It's no problem at all, man, because personally, I know investors who own 80, 90 hundreds of properties and they English is worse than every agent that's <laughs> in this office. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. so that no, not at all, man, not at all. Yeah. Just out of confidence. That's all. So, so again, the business model is the there. So you 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 doing outbound calls uh, to people in America to uh, basically right. see if they're interested in in selling their property, right? And I know I know you you right. actually started to get other people in real estate um, to work with you, right? I think recently you mentioned you you picked up a client or two who, who want that service that that assistance as well from you, where you basically assign an agent. To that client, and then and you're calling, you know, you know, different call lists on behalf of that client. Yeah, that's how you're how you're expanding. Correct. Okay. Correct. Correct. That's exactly what we do. We actually picked up two clients because they was definitely satisfied with the level of productivity that the agents here were bringing mm -hmm. nationwide equity pros, which is my other business in the United States, which is the first client of the business in Haiti, which is Buzz Inc. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So from that client, Nationwide Equity Pro, we obtained two new real estate clients. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the training, the training process, you definitely have to be patient, Mark, because mm -hmm. you got to understand in the United States, you have things like Northwest, Northeast, Terrace, South. That's not in Haiti. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you have to keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. So as you're, as you're, the, the terraces, different real estate terminology the street mm -hmm. names and the zip codes and just the structure of the united states being that a lot of these agents who's actually calling never been to the united states right right so it takes a certain level of patience take you have to be here boots on the ground i, I definitely wouldn't want to do this on a virtual thing so that's why it was important for me to be here doing it makes sense yeah for sure for sure <laughs> Definitely. And again, he is again, there's be clear to the folks listening. He is in Pitchonville right now doing this COVID. <laughs> you know, just, you're making it you know, <laughs> leading his troops on the ground, which is which is fantastic. You know, and so it's kind of you know, start to wrap it up. I know again, you you you've seen incredible success thus far in the little bit of time you've had with your business venture. I know, in fact, you're looking to even start diversifying, you know, you're looking to try to get into uh, like Airbnb and, and some and some real estate opportunities. So you, you're looking to even further invest in, in Haiti. We had these you know conversations offline, which is fantastic. But but I don't know. Talk to me. But at the end right. of the day, all this is step one, right? Because I know I know your next business venture. I know you want to make you want to your next big big venture. You want to it needs to be somewhere in Africa, right? And so talk to us about that. You kind of alluded to it in the beginning, but what is the pan? Uh, Africa plan Tyreek Muhammad has for 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 economic salvation of of us. <laughs> Tell talk to us about that. The master plan. <laughs> well, I say this. I say this, man, and I talk about this a lot with different friends, different family. The Africans in America and the United States are economically the strongest black people in the world. That's 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 statistically proven with 1.3 trillion, which would make the Africans in America the ninth richest nation in the world. We need to diversify that. We need to expand. We need to outsource that. Everything to me, just my mentality. I don't believe everything should just only stay in the United States. I feel we should invest in Africa. We we should invest in Haiti, Jamaica, and so forth and so on to build them bridges. Connect them with the Africans on the continent and all the Africans in the diaspora. We can do business, import and export amongst each other the same way the Chinese do with China in Chinatown. And I can go on and on about that. So it's very, very, very important that us as black people in the United States start to expand. And we're, we're not different. We're not. I don't I don't believe people ask me all the time. Then are you you Haitian? Why you why you here? You Haitian? I tell them I'm everything. We black, we all one. 
it's no separation but that's what the media that's what they want because when you divide it you can conquer so it's important for me being born in the united states to take that leap being coming from where i come from where the people who come in under me the youth can see like hey this guy came from where i came from and he went to haiti to start his business he went to africa to do this to start business to create opportunity I just feel like that move is revolutionary and I'm ready to put everything on the line to fulfill that mission. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's about to me, man. That's what it's about. That's awesome. I love it. I love yeah. it. I love it. I love it. And, that, and that's really why I, I wanted to get Tariq here on the show because I really do believe that as well. I believe, you know, if the, the day that we have a, a, uh, an African American, as a class who are not only in their, in their own homes in the States doing well. Yeah. I think Haiti, you know, cause imagine if you have a, a group of African Americans who are doing well to the point where they, the, cause when you're doing well, you're not focused on the, the immediate concern. You start to sit back and think and sit back and research and sit back and do, and, and really, you know, understand the larger scope here. And, mm -hmm. and you'll see, you'll get finally a generation of folks who, um, again, it's not about leaving America. We're not saying that, but we're certainly saying, you know, the way we spend our money and do our investments can certainly go a different way, right? They can go to a Haiti. They can go to a Ghana. Right. They can go to, heck, even a Jamaica, right? They can go to a place where um, you feel as if you're impacting a, a global situation, which is what? Wherever you go, right? Again, it's, that's not. We're not here to say one race is doing this to another, or you know, point the blame and and talk. You know, you know, you know, bigotry. We're not. We're not here to talk about that. We're just. We're just. We're, all we're saying is, look, the poorest people on the planet are black. That's yeah. a problem, right? So how can we, as black that's people, help other black people mm -hmm. be, improve and get to another place, right? And I and 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 we feel as if. You know, it's been tried. Other people, you know, maybe Europeans, Chinese have all got to the table. And and and, and, and we, all we got to say is look at the results. We're not even asking what their motivations are. But all we're going to say is look, let's look at the results. And the results are what? We haven't seen much improvement for the general body of black people in, yeah. in, in these places. So, so you know, let's try something different. Let's, let's say, all right, this time, let's bring black people to the table. Yeah. Table of black people and let and yeah. let's see what happens this time, right? Yeah. Let's see what happens there. And let's the let's let let's, let's see what the results are. And I suspect when you have people who, who look like the people who are divvying up and thinking about you know how to impact economic opportunity, I have I have a suspicion that that is when you'll start to see um things align to where the people who are most you need to have their ties risen, mm -hmm. actually have their ties risen. Just a suspicion. But <laughs> in the meantime, yeah. we'll, we'll keep chugging away, keep building the enterprise, right? And we have folks like Tyree to thank uh, for, uh, um, you know, being a part of that. So Tyree, how, how, do, how, do, how can folks get in contact with you and, and what you're doing from a real estate perspective? Because I know there's a lot of people who um, would, would be very interested in, in the things you're doing in America and especially doubly happy to know that while they're doing it in America, they're actually really helping Haitians in Haiti in the in, in the best way possible as in giving them jobs. So how, how can mm -hmm. folks get in contact with you and, and, what's, and who's the ideal type of person to get in contact with you? Someone who motivated, man. Somebody who looking for opportunity, who has the qualification, self-driven who has a growth mindset you have a growth mindset you, you looking for opportunity you can reach out to me at official Tariq muhammad that's at official Tariq muhammad okay okay you can reach out to me directly and i, I will respond and i want to say this cgnt i want to say this to your audience he's a real one man this is no front this is no make believe CGNT. He is real, man. Chris, I call him Chris. I know y'all know him as CGNT, <laughs> but he's real. He's authentic. He's official. He's really boots on the ground. He really love Haiti. 
He really love what he's doing, man. I definitely appreciate all the beautiful media that you put out of Haiti, showing a beautiful country, the beaches, the mountains, mm-hmm. and everything that Haiti got to offer. The world need to see that, man, because Channel 7 News in Miami and ABC and whoever else, they not showing Haiti in that light. So y'all definitely need to pay attention to what he's doing and open your mind up. This guy's bringing something fresh to the team. Keep doing what you're doing, man. Thank you, Tyree. Thank you. I'm, I'm humbled. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I'll keep at it because I can't I can't see myself not. <laughs> it's like breathing. I can't. It's like actually, I just wouldn't be able to go on. So mm-hmm. so so Mark, uh, you know, good conversation. What, what, what have you gotten out of this, man? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really encouraged and inspired by Tyreek. Um, I think one of the biggest ills of, of our country and one of the reasons why we remain undeveloped is because development always comes from someone who doesn't look like us. Um, historically, development has come from um, people who doesn't look like us. And I think this is the, the thing that needs to change is that we can understand that our people can serve our own people. Our people can help our own people. Um, and, I, and I think, it, you know, for a Haitian American to go back to Haiti is one thing. For someone who's not a Haitian doesn't, doesn't at all, um, but has, you know, and then to go back to Haiti, it's a completely different thing. And that takes a lot. That I mean, that takes a whole, con- a different mindset and different level of, of, of dedication um, to development of our people. And so, Tariq, thank you. You know, on behalf of, um, you know, our people, thank you for for seeing the value in our people, the value in our country. Thank you for seeing the potential that we have, and thank you for putting your time and your resources, and your life, um, you know, on the line to 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 build business and create jobs, create employment, and transform lives in Haiti. Man, we we appreciate you. Man, Pagé Poblem. Somebody said that he speak better Creole than you, Chris. <laughs> I, think <so. laughs> I think he might. Great stuff, Tyra. And and so listen, uh, thanks so much for being on. And this is the thing, you know, my audience who's listening here, who made it this far. You know, that's the thing. Haitian, yeah, we're, we're the Mapi from IT, the Haitian DAS, we're living Haiti podcast, but but it's more than that, right? That's just sort of uh, the, the theme, but the idea is more, it's about how do we bring people of any background, folks of whatever level of, of capacity, maybe someone particularly affluent with money or affluent with knowledge, and how do you integrate what your ambitions are to improve the country? Because that's that's how the country changes when we have folks who can multi-dimensionally um you know do work and, and hopefully work together eventually work together in, in different capacities to help build on each other that is when the country changes right so that's what the show podcast is about that's what this this episode has been about bringing tyrek on and as always guys if you no matter where you're watching this if it's on apple Podcasts, spotify google Podcasts, uh, on anchor itself uh, make sure to hit that like button of this episode. Hit that thumbs up. Hit that five stars. We're on we're on YouTube and on Facebook. You know, a lot of folks listen through my CGNT channel on there. So if you're watching there, drop a comment. Hit a like button, right? Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you fo- you follow wherever you're listening to. Make sure you follow because that's, that's important because we're going to be dropping episode after episode, and we want folks uh, to 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 not miss. Uh, the content that we're bringing out because these are the conversations that, that we need to have we need to have these conversations because it, it's from these conversations we, we bring on to action so that's that's where we're going to end it i appreciate mark i appreciate Tyreek. thanks guys again for coming in and, and as always until we're back at it again we'll be back at it again yes sir yes sir